research interests are primarily in experimental fluid mechanics. I've seen lots of exciting things in fluid flows and I wish to share them with you um, today. Flow on the length scale of a human hair. You see a human hair there and behind the, the human hair is the apparatus. This pixel on a liquid crystal display screen and we're increasing the voltage. As we increase the voltage, you see the onset of hydrodynamic instability. We see this nice roll structure in this direction. As we keep increasing the voltage, that structure becomes unstable and you start to see motion. You start to see this um, structure oscillating around and it looks to be, it starts to become disordered. But even within that disorder, as we keep increasing the applied voltage, what you will see is the emergence of a new type of order pattern inside. You see this appearance of this square type pattern. And waves start to propagate life in one direction or another direction. And you will see that the motion becomes more and more disordered. And so it looks like turbulent or highly disordered motion. To me, it reminds me of insects or bees fighting with each other. And you see, is this turbulence? or is this highly disordered motion, but you have to always remember that the motion you're looking at is on the length scale, so much less than a micron. Um, describing this with any equations of motion is really very challenging. We now look at a granular um, segregation problem. So here we have a tray of material, which is a mixture of metal walls and um, poppy seeds. And you're looking down the top of a tray which is going to oscillate from side to side like this. So when you shake it from side to side, you see that almost immediately it starts begin it segregates into these patterns. And the stripes that you see are arranged orthogonal to the direction in which we're shaking. And you see interesting behavior such as coarsening where one of the, the stripe here in a minute you will see merges with this stripe here. And so eventually we end up with um, four stripes present. The question is what's driving this? But why is this segregating out to form these nice striped patterns like that? In fact, it turns out that you need a critical concentration of particles in order to get this to progress. And the, th the phenomenon that we're looking here is really quite robust. So we now take a mixture of metal chains and poppy seeds and shake it from side to side. Now you see it's a much slower phenomenon now but, uh, than uh, there was with the um, small spheres, but now we have all these... Um, Chains that you see, they begin to slide along each other, move towards each other, and they actually segregate in a very similar fashion to what we had before. And you might think, to well, what has this got to do with um, fluid mechanics? Well, when is, a, when is a, 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 a granular material collection of particles fluid-like? When is the behaviour fluid-like? Well, here we have an interesting example where what we've done is taken the same shaking tray and we have a a small block that we've imposed in the tray and we're shaking things from side to side as we had before. Now is that vortex motion or is it the motion of a collection of lots of granular material? It looks to all intents and purposes just like the motion of a fluid vortex going round and round like that. That's what it looks like. It looks like a, a vortex motion but you've got to remember that it's actually a collection of um, granular material of small individual particles that have been driven around in this collective way. So sometimes you can describe the motion of granular materials as if it were a fluid and a particularly striking example of where this um, segregation and fluid-like behaviour take place is in a rotating drum such as this because there's a wave motion that propagates, you'll see it more clearly in a minute, up and down the surface of this material here and you see it forms this nice flower-like pattern on the surface. There are two types of particles here, there are larger white particles and smaller red particles and as they are propagating downhill what's happening is the red particles are dripping through in the gaps between the bigger white particles and if the rotation is such that the timing is right for this wave to propagate up and down so you get the formation of this nice um, structure pattern in the middle. So it's a combination of fluid-like behaviour on the surface and 
going of motion within the material. Where if we were now go to um, a different type of system now, where we have um, two fluids, the light fluid at the bottom, heavy fluid at the top, and so it's unstable, and what happens is that the heavy fluid falls down, and you get the formation of this interesting finger on the, I'll play that one more time, you get the formation of this interesting finger up the centre of this um, cylinder, which is interesting finger. That's a, that's a real challenge to um, theory, to explain why that finger forms, because these are both incredibly viscous fluid. The one at the top is golden syrup, the sort of thing that you put on your toast in the morning, um, and the um, bottom one is a very viscous silicon oil. When you turn this upside down, there's this instability that happens because this one's heavier than that one, this tongue goes down, but it's a small finger that goes up in the middle that's a really interesting challenge for theory to explain. If I take a very viscous fluid and um, in my rotating drum and I put a, a needle in the fluid and have the rotating drum going round like that and the needle is can, sits at an angle and it propagates along that direction there until it hits the end wall it, you'll see what happens in a second. This is completely full of, this drum is completely full of very viscous fluid. The needle flips over and it propagates back to the other end. It flips over, comes back again, flips over and it does that in a metronomic way. Just keep going from side to side like that in a very slow fashion. Now if I take um, another example of a very viscous fluid, if we um, have a vertical belt which is covered in a thin layer of viscous fluid everywhere round about is air except for a very viscous fluid on the layer of the belt which some of it obviously gets wrapped around the ball as well and you're able to balance the ball at a particular position up the belt if I go too fast then the ball will go up the belt if I go too slow the belt the ball will run down the belt, and if I stop, obviously the ball will fall off the belt. But it's possible to achieve a balance by um, having a very thin viscous layer on the surface of the belt which wraps around the ball and can balance it there. It works not only for um, spheres, it also works well for a cylinder. You can balance a cylinder on a belt. It will run up, the, the belt is vertical, you're looking face on, you've got to remind you there's air everywhere round about other than a very, and the only fluid, other fluid is a very thin viscous layer that's on the belt which also wraps itself around the cylinder and it's possible to balance the cylinder at a particular position on the belt. Again, you have to run the belt sufficiently fast to maintain it there, else it will either run up or run down the um, belt. We look at the belt again with the cylinder on it clipped from the side. You see, I wasn't cheating before, it, it was genuinely going vertical. You see the vertical belt, air all round about, and you can see the cylinder is balanced if the speed of the belt is sufficiently fast. It's balanced by this thin viscous layer, which is the order of a tenth of a millimetre thick on the surface of the belt. Um, the other thing that I'd like to share with you is what happens in a very viscous fluid when we have three spheres which are about 10 millimeters in diameter and the two end spheres contain little magnets and what we're applying out externally is a uniform magnetic field that we're oscillating. This causes the um, magnets in the spheres at the end to want to align themselves with the magnetic field so they oscillate up and down like that. Now the interesting thing is if you take two such spheres, they will simply oscillate up and down in reciprocal motion and not do anything. They will not go anywhere. But when you've got three like this, you've got sufficiently nonlinearity in the problem that if you watch it for a very long time, that it will actually propagate, it's propagating in that direction, albeit very slowly. So it's actually swimming along at a, at a very um, small speed in that direction there. I've been interested in my research about the um, onset of disorder in fluid flows and I want to show you, uh, an, I think, a nice little example of um, something where you can see such things. So there's a line of steel balls in a cylinder full of golden syrup, it's completely filled and it's rotating like that. 
So the balls are being dragged up by the, of the side of the cylinder by the motion of the cylinder, else they would just fall down. So this line goes up, the line of balls goes up to about 90 degrees, and when it reaches 90 degrees, what you will see is it begins to fall from the wall. So this line of balls begins to fall from the wall, and you'll see the motion become stronger in a second of this line of balls when they come up the side of the cylinder they're now starting to fall from the wall, albeit it's a small-scale oscillation. So what we're going to do is continually keep increasing the speed of rotation. What you see now is the motion becomes stronger and stronger. The oscillation gets stronger and stronger as the um, cylinder speeds up. But it's still a perfectly periodic motion. If you were to analyse this, you would see that the motion of all the balls is just perfectly periodic. Now you can see a second wave appearing along the length of the line of balls. And now you can see a definite second And now you can see that this line of balls is actually an individual collection of balls. It is not um, linked in any way. It's simply held together by fluid action. Um, but this is, you see the onset of disordered motion through a sequence of definite instabilities where you get a single frequency appear and then a second frequency and then it becomes chaotic motion. My primary interest in research in fluid mechanics comes from the fact that fluid flows are things you can touch and feel and change and observe with relatively unsophisticated apparatus. And moreover, you can set nice and interesting challenges to theoreticians and you can establish really great collaborations with theoreticians Together you can hope to solve some fundamental problems.